Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Digital Learning, a Constructive Approach to Reaching Today's Economic Student. My name is Danny Shapiro, and I'm on the marketing team here at Hawks Learning. Our speaker today is Hawks' very own Kelsey Gamel. As Hawks' economics subject matter expert, Kelsey oversees the development of the economics product line. Kelsey received a Master's of Science in Economics from Baylor University and has been published in the Journal of Asian Business and Economic Studies. We are excited that Kelsey is here with us today to share all her expertise and insight. If you have any questions, please enter those into the question and answer box located on the panel, either, either at the top or bottom of your screen, and we will address them at the end of the talk. And on that note, I will hand it over to you, Kelsey. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for attending today. I know everyone has super busy schedules, so we really appreciate your time. Um, like Danny said, today we're going to be talking about um, reaching today's economic student and using technology effectively. Um, so I am the economics project manager here at Hawk, so I oversee the development of our economics product line, and I'm on the humanities content team, and we work with instructors like yourselves to help develop um, economics products that help reach your students and also meet needs that you have as well. Um, so we want to make sure that we're choosing materials that are engaging to our students and that we utilize technology effectively. So today we're going to be talking about the relevance of technology, the practicality of technology, and how we can use it to best engage with our students, and then briefly touch on the economics resources that we have available. So I want you to just take a second before we hop into this to think about how technology has benefited you in your personal life. Obviously, over the last 15, 20 years, there's been immense change with the internet, with um, mobile phones, smartphones, so many things, and that affects everything we do, whether it's paying our bills online, having audiobooks, having um, Spotify, podcasts, being able to access so many things in so many parts of the world all from our hand is amazing. One thing that I think of a lot with the uh, benefit of technology is GPS. Remember, like 10, 15 years ago, you'd print out um, your directions, and if you took a wrong turn and all of a sudden you were off from your steps, you would be lost and confused, and now we just don't even have to worry about that. We've got this automatic recalculating, automatic let's adjust for road closures or traffic or anything going on, and it's very um, adaptable to what's going on. Uh, in the same way, technology can be really adaptable and really helpful in the classroom as well. Um, so as I'm sure you know, the student today is much different than the student um, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, students are often unprepared for the demands for college, and also there's a rise in the number of non-traditional students who are coming back to school after some time away, and these students in particular missed out on the technology revolution. So that's a particular challenge when you have students coming to your classroom from multiple different places, you're not quite sure um, how comfortable some are with technology, how comfortable others are. Um, and some are even juggling parenting and part-time work or full-time work, and everyone kind of has a different um, set of tools they're bringing to the table. In that way, we want to make sure that we're meeting students where they're at, and we want to make sure that um, we have technology that can both be engaging for the students that grew up with it and not seem outdated, but we also want um, technology that's intuitive and easy to learn for those that might have missed out on that tech revolution. Uh, we want to make sure that no student feels like they're at a disadvantage in any way. Um, and also, obviously, technology is just growing in importance. It's not internet and mobile computing and access to real-time data all the time. It's just growing in importance. And so every job that students are going to be doing is going to entail some sort of technology. And all of current academics and all future work skills rely heavily on that technology as well. And we want to make sure that we land on the point that technology doesn't replace you. It supports you and it's an asset to you as an instructor. So that brings us to our main question of what does it look like when technology ensures that the learning experience is student forward and instructor friendly? Um, so technology in the classroom, um, it's never, technology can help you if used effectively. Um, it can improve the classroom experience. It can bring in um, tools that are relevant and practical and engaging and get students to interact more. Um, as I'm sure you know, students 
don't like just staring at a wall of text or just um, they're, they can get bored easily when they're just being spoken to. So anytime we can incorporate some of that technology and make it more engaging and more practical, students are more likely to remember it and to be more um, excited about coming to class. So first off, we want to start with relevance. Um, as instructors, you know, econ is relevant to every aspect of students' lives. However, sometimes students don't realize that. They don't know how to connect the experiences they have with the economics terminology. And um, students don't have, when they have trouble seeing this, it's hard for them to buy into it. So we want to make sure that um, the technology we're using is promoting academic success. And we can update content and also everything has to do with the future skills. Obviously with education, we wanna be preparing students for what comes ahead. Um, and when we integrate instructional content with a smart technological, technological platform, it shows students meaningful connections between um, the classroom experience and their future lives and their um, real world experience. So technology is so important in every aspect of academics. Um, and the more comfortable that students are with this, the more likely they are to succeed. Obviously, students are registering for classes online. We've got LMS management. Students are checking their grades, submitting work. Um, I know a lot of instructors use online discussion boards to promote that outside of class um, discussion and engagement with the topics. Um, students can access real-time data, and you might even be assigning multimodal projects. There's, this is just a, a, a brief snapshot of all the different ways that technology promotes academic success. And also, technology is not just relevant for the economics classroom, it's relevant um, across the board. Um, obviously, not all of your students are gonna be economics majors, so having them comfortable with technology will help them in every course that they take. Uh, stat classes use Excel, other business classes do. Um, math and economics use digital graphing. Um, we've got science and psychology using lab simulation videos. Um, as we move forward, uh, there will just be more and more incorporation of technology into the classroom and into just the full life of an academic student. Uh, so it's helpful to have technology that's uh, relevant across the board and intuitive across the board. Um, one thing that's interesting and especially helpful with online platforms is updating content. Um, as you know, things are always changing. Think about the trade deals and the change that's been happening over the last few months to a couple years is just rapid change. And like NAFTA is changing and we've got, it's hard to update that kind of stuff in a physical print textbook with an, but with an online course where you can go in and update things and, um, adapt more readily to all the changes that are constantly going on. Um, you can use real world current examples. Um, you can talk about Brexit and how that's gonna impact the EU and how that's gonna change um, the value of the pound, all sorts of things that are relevant and constantly changing. Um, technology allows you to adapt to that and reference that in the classroom way faster than a printed resource could. Um, another thing is obviously technology is so important for the job market. Like I've mentioned before, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, more than 50% of today's jobs require some degree of technology skills, which that even does seem kind of low, but in the next decade, it's going to increase to 77%. So the majority of jobs, the glaring majority of jobs are going to require technology skills. And according to the IDC, by 2020, 5.8 million more jobs will require IT skills, and more than half of those will be software related. So all that to say, we want to make sure students are so comfortable with technology and that they are incorporating these skills into the classroom so that education is preparing them for the future and doesn't seem in any way outdated or disconnected from their future lives. Okay, so practicality. Um, so let's talk about how online educational platforms can work practically and logically to support students. First off, it helps so much if the, uh, if the software or the technology is intuitive and user-friendly. We don't want it to ever intimidate students, but to be something that they can uh, readily digest and understand what's expected of them. Also, accessible delivery. Um, we want to make sure it's available for students wherever. 
Uh, and then as an instructor, it can save a lot of time and provide insight um, to you as to what your class is like. Um, so techno technology should never be an obstacle to learning. It should be an added benefit, something that makes learning more streamlined, easier. It should feel effortless, and students should be able to move quickly and efficiently through their assignments. Um, one thing that's super nice is through using an online platform is that students know there's one place to go. That's where their assignments are. That's where they can access their grades. That's where they can work through homework. They can find out due dates all sorts of things that help students with obviously how busy their lives are and how many things they have going on to know, okay, for my class, I've got one place to go and I can find all the information I need. And also it can promote independence and ownership over academics. When students know that it's in their hands to learn and to move forward and to figure out all the answers rather than constantly being coming to you with all the questions that you've already provided with them, we want students to get that agency and be responsible for their own success in the classroom. For delivery, students are so busy, and when the platforms can be accessed across multiple devices, that's meeting students where they're at. Students are way more often on their cell phones than they are on a laptop computer, and especially more than they are a desktop computer, and as the world changes and as um, technology is more readily available in students' pockets all the time, it's important that their education is also available there and it's not something that they have to set everything else aside and go somewhere else and access it. We want it to be accessible all the time so that students can be learning and continuing that process of learning and application and engaging with their material. Um, libraries and um, other resource centers don't have to download anything to ensure students can log into a program with an online educational platform. It's simply a website that students can access. Um, and they can use these platforms any time of day. And if it's a really good program, it offers strong customer and technical support so that you as the instructor don't have to be the one that's answering the questions. Um, the students will just come to you when they're confused about the content or they're not sure about something or they want help rather than you having to be a tech troubleshooter. That's not your role as an instructor. Um, so really good platforms have that built in and can be that role uh, for you and for your students. Obviously, instructional platforms will save you time. It can reach traditional and non-traditional students through targeted instruction and exposure to current skills and collaborative materials. Um, obviously, instructional platforms can automatically grade homework, which that is a very clear saving of time. Um, you don't have to sit there and grade through problem sets over and over. The, the platform will do it for you. Another thing that's really cool is diagnostics. Like I was mentioning before, how students are coming to the classroom from so many different areas. Um, you're not quite sure where students need help, where they're already proficient. Through using diagnostic exams at the start of the semester, um, you can help navigate where students need extra help and students can be assigned extra lessons and topics that they need help with so they're not overwhelmed and thinking the class is too difficult or if students have already mastered that topic and show proficiency in the diagnostic then they move straight, straight along into um, more meat more meaty concepts or um, just more advanced things that and they don't have to feel like they're wasting time on something they already learned um, we want to make sure that the classroom is challenging but not too challenging but also not why am I wasting my time? I already know this. So diagnostics can kind of figure out some of that and uh, level the playing field and meet students where they're at. Also, another thing that's really helpful is that you can collaborate easily with colleagues. I'm sure we've got several adjuncts here. And when you set up a course with an online platform, it's really easy to share your course across the whole department. And so everyone already has um, the, the course already assigned out and a homework already assigned out and that could be easily shared across the department so that new instructors aren't coming in and having to refigure out everything but it's already kind of set up for them and then um, they figure out how best to teach their students in that uh, framework. Another thing is online platforms give analytical tools so it can show you exactly where your students are at. It can show you a, how much time students are spending in a lesson. You all know you've had that student that comes to you and is like, I'm confused, I don't get it. And then you ask like, 
well, did you do the homework? Did you practice this? Did you try this? And they'll be like, no, I looked at it and I got confused. This can tell you straight away if a student's spending time on the homework and how much time, and you can help kind of troubleshoot that of, okay, this is why you're getting confused. Um, you can also track performance on the class as a whole to see where there are some areas you might want to focus more in, in future lectures and areas where students seem to have a grasp on it can help you tailor your class to that or tailor tutorials or extra, extra help that um, perhaps students need. Engagement. This is quite a buzzword in education, but when, when something is actually engaging, it really does make a huge difference. Um, students want to feel like they're actually interacting with the material, and when it's game-like and something that it feels playful, that makes students more excited to do it. Um, students, everything is so exciting and engaging, and there's so many um, distractors and different things vying for students' attention. So when the technology in the classroom is engaging and feels like a game, it can hold their interest longer. Also, when there's um, numerous interactive exercises, it can give students practice on different things. And rather than one problem on a thing, they can work through multiple on that exact topic to make sure they really understand it. And another thing that's really nice is immediate feedback. As an instructor, you can't provide immediate feedback to your students all the time. That's just so unrealistic. However, with online platforms, students can get targeted feedback based on what they're doing wrong immediately when they make an error. And they can adjust that and figure out how to do it correctly rather than, God forbid, learning something the wrong way and having to go back and relearn it. That is, can be so tricky to do. So when students get that immediate targeted feedback, they can learn a concept correctly. Um, also, online interaction can help promote communication while providing a safe space for students to feel comfortable. Um, I know everyone's got those quiet students that when they share, they've got great ideas, but they can be more reserved. And especially those students that um, have been away from the classroom for a number of years and are coming back, um, they could be even more timid or um, less willing to share their ideas but online interaction can help give students some of that confidence and um, just a little bit of a safer space to share some of their ideas or their thoughts or their questions. Um, and it can help students collaborate on things together. Um, there's a few ways that this can be implemented, either through writing or peer review platforms. Um, students can give and re receive advice from even anonymous sources. So they could actually share maybe something that they would be more timid to share face-to-face. Um, -face. There's also discussion forums where students can connect on the topics that they just learned and have thoughtful conversations and keep that discussion going outside of the classroom. There's also group activities and chapter projects. In the real world, students are not going to be working on their own. There's always collaboration. There's always teamwork. There's always um, group efforts in jobs in the real world, and so students need to learn how to work well with their um, classmates and how to figure out who brings what best to the table. Um, and so that can be done through online platforms as well. So, like I've mentioned a few times, no, no classroom is full of identical students. There's always students coming from so many different places, and there's no magical formula for being able to reach all your students. Obviously, that's the goal, is to reach all the students and make sure that they um, are all understanding and tracking and grasping the concepts. Um, and online platforms can help meet students more where they're at in that way through diagnostic testing, through targeted homework aimed at where students need more help or where they're doing fine, um, and also through reports and tools so you as the instructor can have just better knowledge as to the, the skill set of your classroom. Um, another thing is that visual assimilation through these online platforms, the more visually engaging the, the platform is, the more students are going to engage with it. Um, just in general, altogether, technology is twofold. It can help prepare students for the future, and it is the future. So we want to make sure that we're using it effectively 
um, and teaching students how to use it and how to in interact with it effectively so that they can move forward. I'll talk briefly about the economics resources that we have here. Um, we currently have principles of microeconomics and we're working on macro. So I realize I'm going a little long, so I'll go quick. Um, our principles of micro, we've got a courseware, which is a three-step learning path that has learn, practice, and certify. And it's got that adaptive remediation and error-specific feedback that's targeted to where students are getting things incorrect. Um, it's customizable. You can always add in new information, replace something. If there's some big change in a trade deal or some huge change in something, you can always be updating that. And it's also accessible anywhere. Obviously, print resources are still really helpful, and we do offer those. Uh, we've got a guide and notebook that is aligned with the courseware and the textbook, and it's a pen to paper guide that focuses on note taking, immediate application, and graphing practice, which can be so helpful to uh, just practice on pen and paper to get that stuff down. Um, we have interactive graphing in our courseware as well. Here's a quick little uh, video of what that looks like on the student side. And then we have principles of macro coming soon, which will have that complete courseware as well and a guided notebook print resource. Do y'all have any questions? Okay, <clears throat> thanks so much, Kelsey. <clears throat> Excuse me. As we wait for uh, any questions to come in here from the audience, a reminder to them that they can enter those into the Q&A box. Um, located on the, the panel at the top or bottom of the screen. Could you talk a little bit about the Quizlet feature that we have? I think that's something that applies to a lot of the different areas that you just talked about, gamification, um, making things relevant to students, et cetera. Yeah, um, so I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Quizlet. Um, it is an online flashcard resource, um, but what can be kind of tricky with Quizlet is that it's sort of like Wikipedia, where it's this open source. Anyone can put whatever they want in it. Um, so let's say your student looks at flashcards. They find, oh, great, there's already some created for economics uh, or micro. They might not be actually correct because some student created it and might have gotten something incorrect. Um, however, Hawks is a verified uh, creator on Quizlet. And so you know you have the confidence that your students are accessing the correct terms and definitions. Um, so what's nice about Quizlet is there are multiple different games and ways that students can practice the flashcards and practice learning the different terms through matching games, through different games to help them keep that straight. And like I mentioned before, students are aware of the concepts of econ. They understand diminishing marginal returns if you explain it to them, like the eighth piece of pizza is nowhere near as great as the first one. However, if you just told them diminishing marginal returns or diminishing marginal utility, they might be like, I have no idea what that means. So the more we can um, help connect what the economics concepts are with real world experiences, the better students are gonna remember that and be quicker to apply it. Um, and so Quizlet is another way to help that of just through practice and the gamification of let's work on making these everyday connections. All right, well, um, we are, like you mentioned, we are getting close to the end of time. Um, for our audience, if you do have any questions, please direct them to us at marketing at hawkslearning.com. We'll make sure to get back to you or have Kelsey get back to you with an answer. Uh, Kelsey, thank you again for the presentation and thank you to our audience for uh, joining us today. We will be emailing out a link to view this webinar on demand and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day.